It's been confirmed 33 people managed to escape a devastating fire that engulfed a Russian passenger plane. At least 41 people were killed in the inferno, including two children and a member of the cabin crew. Six people were seriously injured. Passengers used exit slides to escape and now some are being criticised for taking their carry-on luggage with them. For more, I'm joined by former RAAF fighter pilot, our aviation expert, Captain Byron Bailey. Um, look, I'm going to start with these reports. It's pretty troubling that people were taking luggage with them, carry-on luggage. It seems pretty extraordinary when you see the pictures and the size of the flames at the back of this plane when it did land. Yes, it's, uh, it's a terrible situation. There was obviously mass panic. And for people to stop and try and get their bags out of the overhead lockers, heavy bags of that, that's going to delay several seconds and probably... I don't know how many actually carried the bags off, but this uh, needs to be looked at from a criminal point of view. Aviation law is quite explicit that when the uh, senior cabin crew give the uh, briefing beforehand that you must leave your baggage behind when you do an emergency exit, that must be adhered to. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. I don't know how many extra people died over the 41 that did. Uh, it's just shocking. And more than 50% yeah. of the passengers did die. And uh, Look, I think some people get a bit frustrated by the everyday rules of, you know, pull this plug out when you're landing and so on. But to be pulling out your luggage, uh, if that's accurate, extraordinary stuff. Um, as for this accident itself, it appears what well, pilot inexperience could be playing a factor. Let, let's talk us through the incident, because we're talking about... Uh, an emergency landing, the tail hitting the tarmac, the sparks and uh, yeah. happening just after what usually happens in these situations when you've got to come back and land early, they try to dump fuel. Yeah, well, look, um, he was airborne 27 minutes, which suggests to me that it's not actually a time-critical emergency like a, a fire where you have to get on the ground as soon as possible. So why they didn't dump fuel, I don't know. I don't know what the emergency was. It was a low-grade emergency that they were suffering that they needed to return and land, which, incidentally, uh, mm. knowing they were coming back, why weren't all the fire services standing by? But that's another question. Yeah. However, the pilot on his first approach, he was in too tight and went around again and then set himself up for the second approach. But he came in way too fast. And he bounced and then bounced again so hard that the gear collapsed. At that stage, everything was more or less uh, under control in the sense that the passenger should have walked away from a damaged aeroplane. But unfortunately, the gear ruptured the wing fuel tanks and 14,000 litres of fuel caught fire. So you had a massive conflagration going on. All the poor mm. people down the back, you know, it was just a terrible, terrible situation. And I put it down to the fact that the pilots just uh, were inexperienced. They were panicking and um, as a result landed hard and long, came in way too fast, crunched the gear and uh, were in this terrible situation. Uh, hard to fathom that, that, that feeling as the flames were engulfing that the back of the yep. plane there, oh. as you say. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Byron. Yeah, absolutely awful. Now, the whole concept of being all the passengers uh, mm. must be able to vacate the aircraft in 90 seconds using uh, half the available exits, while the Sukhoi Superjet, which has about 100 passengers total, in this case it had less, has four exits, two at the front, two at the back. But the whole uh, idea of evacuation on that 90 seconds is done where you have, say, an engine fire on the right side, so everybody gets out the left side, the one at the rear, the one at the uh, front. However, in this case, both the rear were sort of not usable because of the fire, which meant everybody had to move forward up that single aisle to get out the front. I, I don't think they planned uh, the emergency exit situation this way. It needs a big uh, look at by... The authorities. Byron, is uh, inexperience being spoken about as well with this Miami crash? Oh, I just don't know where to begin. I mean, it was a charter airline, not a regular airline. And, uh, you know, a lot of these charter airlines have guys coming up through their first job before they get some experience to go in a mainline. Uh, and this was landing on a military airfield. They had choice of two runways, 8,000 feet one, 9,000 feet the other. They were operating with one engine, MEL, that is known, locked out, unserviceable, thrust reverser. 
so they knew that they would have a, a braking problem. Instead, they chose to land on the shorter runway with 15 knots of tailwind. You're not allowed to land beyond 10 knots. It's a flight envelope limitation. So the pilots were actually and doing it illegally. As well, um, they landed about 20 knots fast above the normal touchdown speed. So they were about 40 knots ground speed above what they should have been. So they speared off the yeah. end of the runway. Uh, ran out of brakes and they ended up going a further 1,250 feet into the shallow water. I just cannot understand the thought processes of the captain that came to this ridiculous situation. And why didn't the first officer refuse? So pointing out what you're doing is all, you know, absolutely made no sense at all. Yeah. So pilot didn't Byron, experience... Can I ask you just ISIS finally... Speed. Yeah? Yeah, just finally, so we're nearly out of time. But Boeing, it's been revealed didn't tell customers or indeed pilots as well about the MCAS system on the 737 MAX aircraft. Yeah, look, Boeing had a chance after the uh, Ethiopian one uh, of coming clean, sorting the whole problem out, demanding further training, uh, letting everyone know what the situation was, modifying this, this automation system that overrode a pilot's manual ability to fly the aeroplane. Instead, they kind of buried it and, and then they were caught out with the second uh, crash because they didn't do enough. And uh, really, pilot body uh, worldwide is pretty shocked at Boeing and very disappointed. Um, mm. Boeing is in a world of hurt now because the liability is going to be enormous. All the airlines that have had to ground their 737-800 um, Maxes, which probably won't be uh, released to service till the end of the year, there's going to be billions and billions, and I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Trump has to bail out Boeing. It's a sad indictment of the way the yeah. aviation industry is going, where pilots are downplayed, at, uh, that engineers consider that pilots don't need to know about automation that may affect their flying ability. Uh, really, we're heading yeah. off the cliff, I think, in terms of uh, the whole civil aviation industry. Not in Australia. Australia's still the safest place to, to uh, fly. Uh, CASA keeps a good, good to eye hear on that. things. Yeah. Good to hear that caveat, Byron Bailey. Thanks for your time.